Hey, good afternoon everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have some pretty big updates today, and not only am I still showing that we have that 945, 948 millibar pressure still as a problem, I'm still showing we have problems from this tropical wave making it into the Gulf. Plus, the next two waves behind that are starting to look very healthy. Now, if you've never been here before, hello. <laughs> My name is Mark. I do upload every single day. Just not Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. But make sure you hit that subscribe button because I am all year around. Matter of fact, on a second note, guys, thank you so much for your very uplifting words. You are so right. God bless every single one of you. I appreciate you for being my brother's keeper for me because I needed it. Thank you. And you are right, guys, because these people are just a bunch of hypocrites. Matter of fact, if you go on these other videos, you'll see that they are praising these people and one of them had a Cat 5 picture on his thumbnail. And another one just showed the GFS run just smashing over and over and over in a Texas talking about, oh, this is cool. I'm sorry, but this is cool. Not cool. When you're an adult, you realize that these things actually impact people and they change people's lives forever. Even though weather is very amazing and it's very powerful and I can understand the awe and all that, and it is amazing. However, it's not cool because these things are going to change people's lives and some of them forever. My best advice, guys, is either unsubscribe to these people or just use them for entertainment purposes only. That's all they're good for. Now, the two videos I have for you guys, the one on the very top is from the GFS. It's showing your CAPE values, your convective available potential energy. And it's showing that it still has convective energy as it's passing through this dust, through all this shear, going through the Caribbean. And it does pop out towards the Gulf once again. And the one right above my head is from the Euro. That way you can see the precipital water is a P watt anomaly. And it does show that this energy does pass by and it does make it into the Bay of Campeche, South Gulf, Mexico, just like what we just had. Plus, if you look at it, you'll see the next wave coming at the end of that run and you'll see all the precipitation coming with that storm. And it is looking even healthier. But let's go through everything I got for you guys. Hit that like button if you are enjoying these updates. God bless every single one of you. I appreciate it every single one of you hope y'all are truly blessed now this is our first wave coming off this is our disturbance that we're looking at now that has been risen to 30 percent it is still at 30 percent and you can see it has a lot of booming thunderstorms in it at the same time it is reaching a lot of shear at this point you can see the thunderstorms bursting from east to west but you can see the shear coming off from west to east and you can see all the shear coming off this wave and it's all the way through this whole tropical wave is just getting sheared like crazy right now and you can see our system here, group of thunderstorms, and it does have a big plume of dust with it. And it will be carrying that dust with it as it moves into the Caribbean, right past the Leeward and Windward Islands. It don't look like it's headed north because there's too much shear up there. It is headed in the Caribbean. It does have a lot of dust. And if you look at the top video, you'll see that there is a lot of Cape Values also traveling through the Caribbean underneath this dust layer. And our second tropical wave is looking so healthy that it's actually going to become a 1,009 millibar strength by Saturday. Matter of fact, the models show that this could be almost to tropical storm strength by the time it hits the, the edge of the Caribbean. By Tuesday, it moves towards the Caribbean, still nice and healthy. And we have our third wave coming off after that. And it's even more southern, which means it will definitely go underneath this year straight across south america into the central america now just like i told you in the first video it looked like a lot of wind shear it could be bringing this more southern through the caribbean that's what my first assessment was and at the same time i told you this is probably going to get pushed back a few days and just like the last storm we had claudette it took its time and got real slow because it passed through central america east pack and came up through the Bay of Campeche. And we may be looking at that way again. When you look at your cyclone ensembles, you can see that now it's by the 1st instead of the 28th and 29th. I know a lot of people said that they've seen on Ventu Sky that by the 30th, it was going through, through Cuba, go towards Florida. I'm not showing that going to happen. There's a lot of shear, and we have a Bermuda High that will be stretching out. So that wouldn't be possible. But by the first, the ensemble showed that we could have a 980 to 9 millibar pressure system in the Western Caribbean, and it could go anywhere. It could go north at this point, it can go west, and it can go southwest. So it's really up in the air. But right now, this is our newest information that we have, and so far it shows it could intensify still and head straight for Louisiana or southeast Texas, 
just like we had Claudette just now, where it went towards southwest Louisiana, southeast Texas, and it did a curve. Now, I have been noticing that a curve has been trending. So let's look through the perturbed members, guys, and see what the new data is showing. And right here on 13, this is right around the 30th, showing that it could form up into the Caribbean, and it still shows that it could intensify and go towards Louisiana or Texas. Plus right here on 10, you'll see that it can still make it to the Western Caribbean, makes it a day later, but it still heads for the same direction and heads towards Southern Texas. Now that's where we've seen that low millibar pressure system actually trending for a while, but that is somewhat a target going towards Corpus Christi. And one of the newest ensembles that we're showing now is this one right here on six. And it's showing that it actually could still form up Western Caribbean, go towards Texas and then change its mind because the upper level low steering it and it could get sheared off and pushed north right towards Louisiana. And that actually is trending a little bit. And something that's popped up a little later in the members now, this is days later, this is all the way till July 4th, but it is showing that it could pop up right over Jamaica going towards Cuba and actually go over Cuba and head on the east side of Florida and go right up the southeast. So that is a possibility also. And then if you look right here on 20, you can see also it can pop up in the Western Caribbean, go a little bit more Southern and go over the Yucatan, but it's still headed towards Louisiana and Texas, just like what we just had. And so far, one of the scariest ones, if you ask me, is right here on 6, where it just comes out of nowhere, pops up and just goes straight for Alabama and Mississippi with absolutely no warning. It just comes out of nowhere. And when we look through the SpaghettiO models, we can show that it is a good possibility that it could be a little northern in the Caribbean and right above Jamaica, and it could intensify actually to a 960 to a 979 millibar pressure, and it could turn early towards Florida. Matter of fact, it's trending a little bit. But that is a good possibility that if it takes that route, that there could be some very high intensification. And you're showing both models are going the same direction towards the panhandle of Florida. And both of them has intensification, one stronger than the other. So far in the Atlantic Ocean, we're still showing 30% chance for the cyclone to form within 48 hours, also within five days. And the system on the EPAC side has now greatly went up. It went up to 80% chance within five days, only a 10% chance in the next 48 hours. Matter of fact, I'm showing that it could be a very strong hurricane over there. And when you look through the tropical depression chances, you can see it's a big, strong chance for a very strong, at least a 95% chance that that would be a, tr a tropical depression forming. And it could follow the same path as Claudette has taken going to the Bay of Campeche and coming up through our Gulf. And our second wave has a 50% chance of becoming a tropical depression within 72 hours right outside the Windward and Leeward Islands. Now, as you follow it, you can see where the energy goes. You can see the track of this storm and where the energy could go through Central America and through the, the Bay of Campeche. At the same time, you can see how the next wave just has a lot of potential to at least be a tropical depression. And that is going up to a 65% right there. Moving through. And as far as you check to see if there's a tropical storm chance, I'm not picking anything up for the Gulf or the Western Caribbean yet. This right here is by the 29th. This is literally in six days. And you can see that next wave has a good chance right there. That's a 25% chance of becoming a tropical storm and as it grows in opportunity, and you can see where it's moving, right through the Caribbean, and it's going on a nice curve towards Cuba and Florida. And when I look through the spaghetti models for the Gulf, for the EPS, which is Ensemble Prediction System, which is actually a long-range model for Euro. They put a lot of factors into it and try to get better confidence for long-range for the Euro. So they use the EPS. And it's actually showing that by between now and the second, we could get Western Caribbean. It could be weak. But it also could be a 980 to 999 millibar low pressure passing through our Gulf of Mexico. And that's from EPS, and that is a Euro model. But the update on the GFS shows that it could be a weaker system. Somewhere, just like we have at Claudette, a 1000 to a 1010 uh, millibar system from Caribbean moving towards Louisiana. Now, as we look through the shear and see what's going on with the wind shear on our system, you can see this is it here going south into the Caribbean, going straight across South America. And there actually is a lot of shear that will get involved in the system. And it'll push all these low pressure systems through South America. That way they stay out of the Caribbean. But you can still see a group of thunderstorms by the 24 still moving through the Caribbean. And you can see the Cape values in the video on the top. It does continue to move. It stays kind of under the radar because a lot of dust. You can see all the shear happening, so it definitely cannot form at this point. Now, by Friday on the 25th, 
it makes it past all that shear, it makes a little southern track, and it actually becomes upper level low again, right above Central America. And then as you go through, you can see that the shear veers away, the low pressure system is able to sneak into the upper Western Caribbean, right above the Yucatan, and this is by the 28th. And then you still have your big upper level low over the, the Gulf of Mexico, and it's still making a Western push on the upper level low. Except now you have a lot of shear that's going to be happening to this low pressure system from this upper level low, bringing wind shear just like we just have with Claudette. And it will continue to track towards the center of the Gulf, hidden wind shear, staying pretty weak. And the wind shear gets very violent on the first as it gets closer to Louisiana or Mississippi. So I don't see an opportunity really if it takes this track for it to be anything stronger than what we just had. But you can see it here when you look for cyclonic vorticity. This is our tropical wave right here. And you can see as it moves through the Caribbean that it has to stay on a southern push. Because you can see all these fierce winds pushing from west to east. That is giving it a lot of shear and it can't do anything with that. Plus it has some dust wrapped around inside of it. But once you get to the 28th, it starts moving its vorticity towards the western Caribbean. It starts picking up a surface low again, a closed low, as it moves towards the Yucatan. Now right here is when you have your trough that's going to be happening. It's going to be a lot of shear going on right around the 30th. But at the same time, you can see now you got northerly winds coming from the south, pushing straight north. And that's going to push this tropical depression, this tropical cyclone, right into the Gulf of Mexico, aiming straight for Mississippi and Louisiana. And when you get to the 30th, that flag right there, that means 50. So that means that the knots get very strong and the winds get very strong from a south to a north and it starts pushing directly north at this point and goes straight for Louisiana. So I'm showing that if this trough stays in place, just like we just have at Claudette, there's no way it could go to Texas. Uh, it could get close and then get spin and curve back to the right. But there's a trough that's going to be setting up just like we had with Claudette. And our update on a potential velocity anomaly is good news. Somewhat good news. It's showing that it is weaker. It's showing that we will have something around the 25th. That's a little smaller system to the southeast. But on the 26th to the 27th, we got something very strong that could be in our Gulf of Mexico. So we still need to watch out. Something still could pop up. However, the potential has weakened greatly. Now, as we look at our PWAT anomaly, this one's from the GFS. This is our group of thunderstorms here. This is by the 26th. And you can see all the dry air. This is the dust that's getting into our system. It's actually showing that it will get away from this dust by the 27th and 28th. You see all the dust in front of it. By the time you get to the 28th, now the dust continues west, and this storm is now free to roam. But you'll see this group of, of moisture move into the Caribbean. It will become a strong group of thunderstorms, and it can head towards the north of Gulf of Mexico. That is still showing. Now, not only the wind shear, but we also have this big Bermuda high pressure over here in the Atlantic. And this is actually going to stretch out and push things away. As you look, this is all the way from the 27th, and the high pressure starts expanding out. And it goes all in the Gulf. Here's another look from the Western Caribbean. You can see how the high pressure just really expands out and it really stops anything else from coming through there. That's why I'm thinking maybe a more Western push, just like Claudette. The model guidance shows from the last few trends that we've been having is there is a chance for it to get into our Gulf of Mexico, even right over our Yucatan. If you just look at the trends of what we've been having every day, all day long with the different model runs, you can see it is trending Western Caribbean. But as of this morning, now it's showing that it can get into our, it can go through Central America and get into our Bay of Campeche once again, just like Claudette did. And I'm still showing that we have that strong anomaly. I'm showing before that happens that this system that goes to the EPAC actually will strengthen down to our 948 that we have been seeing. So 948 is still in this region. A lot of energy, very strong tropical wave. We need to keep our eye on it. This is the first time we've seen it down here. Then after that, you can see it goes right over Mexico, right over Central America, into the Bay of Campeche, and it starts forming up there. So we need to worry about that once again as this goes right up the west coast of Mexico. And if this actually goes up further enough, it could bring some rainfall for the southwest, which y'all do need. So I kind of hope that happens to bring y'all some rain. All right, so I'm going to play this for y'all so you can see the next 60 hours of what you can expect. You do have clear weather coming. 
God bless every single one of you. Thank you so much for being there for me. I will always be there for you. Today I want to read, praise to God, amen. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to seize unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen. And just for those wondering, Selah means take a moment of what you just heard and think about it. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Thank you so much for visiting me today. Y'all truly are my brothers and sisters. God bless you. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a very, very blessed day.